Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're not only going to take a look at how to get started with Adobe Creative Cloud but more importantly how to take advantage of it. How to get at some of those little things that you may not have noticed that we've added along the way in Creative Cloud. So first thing is if you're new to Creative Cloud and you haven't installed anything yet you're probably going to want to head over to adobe.com sign up for Creative Cloud and that's where you begin the process. So once you're signed up and signed in, you'll notice the brand new adobe.com uh, interface, which by the way is nice on tablets, smartphones, and just about any device. Now I'm going to head over to the application or desktop apps, which is where you would probably want to begin. And when you start that process, uh, since I already have it, it doesn't give me a link to download the Creative Cloud desktop app. But if you didn't, there would be a link to download it. Now, it, whether you've downloaded it or not, whenever you start the process to download an application, it's going to prompt you to download it anyway. So I've already got it installed, but I just want to show the process. If I wanted to install Dreamweaver, for example, I can click download. It's going to take me to another screen. It's going to tell me, hey, you know, you need the Adobe uh, desktop app. Uh, do you want to install it? I'm going to say yes. And then it's going to begin the process of downloading and installing the application you chose. So in my case, that would be Adobe Dreamweaver. And if we scroll down, we can see the progress bar for Dreamweaver is underway. Now, the desktop app is where we're going to be spending a lot of our time uh, for this video. And so I'm going to go ahead and tear it off. And this can float as its own window, or you can at any time pin it back up to the bar and it can pop up and pop down as a pull down menu as needed. So once we're here, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. I'm gonna switch over to the Home tab and I'm gonna go ahead and hide everything else for now just so we have this as our focus. Now, as you can see, it's giving me a um, kind of a history of what's been going on with Creative Cloud. It's giving me feedback on people that are following my work, people that are appreciating other work that, or people that I'm following and work that they're appreciating. And any new activity happens in the Home tab. So there's a new thing that just happened. Hey, you installed Dreamweaver CC for 2014. Do you want to view any tutorials? Again, that will take me over to the learning content to view more tutorials for the application I just installed. Now, if we head over to the Apps tab, once you've installed one application from the website, you no longer need to go to the website to do it. You can actually do it all directly from uh, the Creative Cloud desktop application. So here you can see not only the apps that I have installed, but you can see whether or not they're up to date. And by the way, uh, you know, this kind of kills one of those myths out there that your applications are not running in a browser, they're not running online, you're actually downloading and installing these applications on your hard drive in your applications folder as you always did. So you can even see that I've got multiple versions of some applications. So I've got Photoshop CC, Photoshop CC for 2014, and Photoshop CS6. Yes, you can have multiple versions installed, and you can install these applications on up to two of your computers, and now they no longer even have to be the same platform. So I can have a Mac and a PC, two PCs, two Macs, doesn't matter. I can install it on any of my two computers. Now, as I scroll down, it shows me any applications that are installed and whether or not they're up to date. And if, if it needed updates, I can click the update button if I want to. But as I get down to the middle, there's a bar here that separates what's installed from what isn't installed, meaning other applications that I may want to install at any given time. So for example, I heard Edge animates really cool animations for the web or for digital publishing suite or for Muse. I can go ahead and install that right from here and it will begin that installation process. So once again, I don't have to go back to the website to do it, I can do it from here. Now there's another hidden thing uh, in this bar and it's a menu. When I click the menu, this is where you can now access your previous versions. So if you want to go all the way back to CS6 in any of the applications, whether you own CS6 previously or not, you're free to install those applications uh, from CS6 going forward. So we're archiving your older application installers so that you don't have to worry about keeping those handy. You can install them from Creative Cloud anytime you want and of course uninstall from the actual application whenever you don't need the application anymore. 
So I can have CS6 maybe installed on an older computer and my latest version of CC for 2014 installed on my newer computer and away I go. So that's the apps tab. Now let's head over to the assets tab, which is fairly new in what we've been doing here. So the assets tab allows me to access my Creative Cloud storage. So I get up to 20 gigs of storage with most Creative Cloud plans, and I can access that storage one of two ways here. I can open up the folder, and it will pop open the folder on my computer where my Creative Cloud files are being stored. Now, this storage is optional. You can put files in here whenever you want, take files out whenever you want, and the, the beauty of putting files in here is that they will now sync between your two computers that you've got Creative Cloud installed on. And more importantly, they'll be accessible on the web or accessible in our mobile applications. So how easy is it to sync a file? You can just go in, drag a file in, and that file will begin the sync process. You can also create a folder. So I can create a folder called, um, let's call this one artwork. If I could spell artwork, there we go. So I've got the artwork folder there. And these folders and files are syncing. You get the little sync icon. Once they're synced up to Creative Cloud, then they're there. And again, even if I'm offline, these files are still in this folder. So even if I don't have an internet connection, I can still access the Photoshop file or the logo that I just placed in here or that folder, anything I want, because they're still on my hard drive, even though they've also synced up to Creative Cloud. Now, uh, when I go back to the Creative Cloud desktop app, there's also the uh, view on web. So if I say view in the web browser, that'll take me to my files area and show me those exact same files on the web. And you might be using other online storage like Dropbox or Google Drive or Box.net or any of the other ones, and they're great, but the one thing they won't do that will do for Creative Cloud is that they're not going to show me what my actual files look like. So for example, here's an InDesign file. I can click on this InDesign file, I can actually page through it, and I'm doing this directly in a browser, even if InDesign's not installed or not open on my computer. And of course, I, uh, once I get back to my files area, I can also share files. So for example, um, I've got a PSD here that I'm sharing with my designer, and I can look at this file, and you notice on the right-hand side, that we even have the ability to add comments. So she can add a comment remotely, and that comment will appear in, there it is, it just popped up from Victoria. That comment will appear, and I can see the comments that others that I've shared this file with, and I can, of course, add comments back in. Now, she asked, did I like the music note? We'll cover that in a moment. But you'll notice below that, there's the current version and a revised an hour ago. That means I've saved this Photoshop file in a previous version an hour ago, and with versioning, I can even revert back to a previous version. So, how easy is it to share a file? Just go up to your share um, button and click send link, and you can then get a link to that particular file, share it with anyone, and allow down downloading if you choose to allow downloading for that particular file. So, that's how easy it is to share files. What about folders? And that's what we're really collaborating on today as a folder. So as a matter of fact, we call the feature collaboration. So remember that artwork folder that I added? Well, there it is. If I wanted to collaborate with others, I can click collaborate, and then I can invite others to access that folder. So that folder would then appear in their Creative Cloud folder or files folder. And if I just type an email address, hit invite, they'll get a notification pop up. Hey, Terry's invited you to collaborate on this folder and that folder would be there for them to collaborate. Well, I'm already doing that with my uh, designer, Victoria. As a matter of fact, we're collaborating on this play campaign project. And you can see there are two people on it, myself and her. And of course, I can still invite others to collaborate if I want to. Now, um, she asked me on that Photoshop file whether or, not, whether or not I like the music note. Let me show you what she's talking about. Let's head over to Photoshop. And in Photoshop, there's a music note that's been placed in this Photoshop file from Illustrator as a linked smart object. So it's in that folder that we're both sharing or collaborating on, and she's in another state. And if she updates or saves that, because actually I don't like that file, I would rather it be a CD icon instead of a music note. Once she updates it, 
my Creative Cloud icon will start to flutter here, letting me know that it's syncing that update. So I just saw the little icon flutter back and forth, which means she made a change, she updated that file, and if I go, I can you know, go see it online, or if I can just click back, you can see that Photoshop has updated that file. So, linked smart objects even remotely via collaboration. So it's pretty cool to be able to do all this directly with Creative Cloud without any, any extra real effort. So let's head back to the Creative Cloud uh, Files folder because we've got more. Now Files, or Creative Cloud Desktop app, Files is the area we've been working in so far. But you notice there are two other areas now under Assets. There's Fonts and there's Market. When I click on Fonts, this is showing me the Typekit desktop fonts that I've added thus far and the ability to add more fonts and even manage those fonts, meaning the ones that I don't want anymore, I can unsync. And these fonts are available to me as a Creative Cloud member. So I have access, if I'm a full member or a single app member, I have access to a library of $40,000 plus worth of new fonts that I can use. So how do I access these fonts? Well, I can of course add them from here, but now we're building that process more and more into our applications. So you, for example, I've got this type layer selected, Inspire, Create, and Play, and I would like a much thinner font on that. Well, if I go up to, if I, uh, go up to my font menu here in Photoshop, there's now in Photoshop for 2014, there's now a type kit button, and you'll find that button in Photoshop, you'll find it in Illustrator, you'll find it in InDesign, the ability to go in and add new fonts directly from the application. So that'll take me to the web where I can do all my browsing. I'm looking for a nice sans serif font, so that'll filter it down to just my sans serif fonts. And I like this Museo Sans. I can go ahead and click Use Fonts. It'll show me the styles that are available for desktop use. I can then click Sync, and that's it. It's now syncing those fonts from Creative Cloud down to both my computers, whether it's Mac or Windows, 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 Mac, Mac, and those files or those fonts are available to me in Photoshop as soon as the sync process has happened. And as a matter of fact, once that sync process has happened, you can go in to your font menu and you can even filter down to the uh, Typekit fonts. And now there they are, Museo Sans 300 and Museo Sans 300 Italic and Museo, San, Museo Sans 700 and 700 Italic. I actually like 300. I'm going to go ahead and leave, uh, leave it on that. So that was it. I was able to go get a new font, didn't have to quit my application, didn't have to download an installer, didn't have to find the installer, run the installer, manage it in any other kind of font utility. I just said, hey, I want to use this font. Photoshop was still open the whole time. I even started the process from Photoshop and ended it in Photoshop by choosing the new font. So that's the new Typekit desktop font syncing from Creative Cloud directly in your applications. And that font is not available to just my Creative Cloud applications. That font is available to all of my applications on my computer. So even if I'm using a non-Adobe application, heaven forbid, I'd be able to actually use that font in that application because it's installed as a Creative Cloud member. I can use that font in any of my products, whether they're Creative Cloud products or not. So let's head back over to the Creative Cloud desktop app and let's go to the brand new market. So we have the Creative Cloud market, just like we had fonts for being able to um, uh, use fonts in my design, we now have royalty-free artwork for you to use in your designs as well. So we've been doing this whole play fest music theme and of course the market, I can just browse it if I want. I can uh, pull down a menu and I can see the featured items. I can see the recent items. I can see things I've downloaded. I can see uh, items for placement, uh, user interfaces, vector shape, icons, patterns, and brushes. Or I can simply search, which is much easier for me. I just want to search for the word music. When I do that, it will find anything that has the keywords music in it for me to use. As a matter of fact, this is where that actual CD came from that my uh, designer used. And because we're both Creative Cloud members, we have no problem sharing these assets back and forth because we're both Creative Cloud members and we have access to them. But if I wanted the headphones, for example, I can go ahead and click the headphone uh, download and it is now syncing that headphone uh, vector file directly to 
my Creative Cloud Files folder for me to use. So if I go um, here, let's go back up. Let's kill the search and let's go in, show what's downloaded. There's the um, file and I can see it larger, but more importantly, if I go back to my files folder, once I open my files folder, there's a market downloads folder. I can double click on it and here are all the things I've downloaded from Creative Cloud Market, including the headphones, which I can open up in Illustrator as a complete vector ready to use file. So here it is in Illustrator, ready to use to do anything I want using any of my projects and most importantly, it's royalty free. So that's the Creative Cloud Market as now a part of Creative Cloud. So let's go in and let's take a look at the last tab, which is community. And in the community tab, I can see work that is being uploaded to Behance. So Behance is the world's largest uh, creative network. And as a matter of fact, from here, I have access to it, not only to view my profile, but I can add work directly from it. I can also add work directly from the applications themselves. So if I'm in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, so forth and so on, I can post directly to Behance. But from here, I can see kind of like an activity feed of what my, what my followers or people I'm following are posting, what they're appreciating. And if I uh, see something, like, like I said, I think I saw something from my designer earlier, uh, something she did six hours ago, I can go ahead and click on it. That'll take me right to it. I can view the entire project. I can see the finished work. I can see the original photos that she started with. I can see how she kind of came together with this concept and composited it together. And most importantly, if I like it, I can go ahead and appreciate it, which is like giving it a thumbs up or a like. And if I want to add comments to her project and discuss it, like what was your motivation? How did you get started doing this? I can go ahead and add those comments in. So that's how easy it is to do uh, appreciations and work with Behance directly from Creative Cloud and more importantly, directly from your applications. And for those of you who, are, who haven't seen Behance yet, not only can we you know, post our own work and appreciate work of others, but more importantly, you can actually use Behance to get jobs. There's a job listing there. You can post for a job and get work directly from Behance. So that's how easy it is to get started with Adobe Creative Cloud. I hope you got something out of this. And more importantly, I hope you learned a few things about what's, what's available in Creative Cloud and maybe busted some of those myths that are out there about accessing your applications, accessing your files um, that are still floating around out there from people that aren't aware of what Creative Cloud is all about. Thanks again for watching. My name is Terry White.